if I were to ask you, what do you know about diabetes? Most of you would probably answer that you get it when you eat too many sweets, drink Coke, and don't work out. And it's partially true, but there's much more behind it than meets the eye. Before we delve into the complexities of treating diabetes, let's have a closer look at what exactly is a so-called sugar disease that's the most prevalent life childhood civilization illness. Basically, diabetes develops when central areas in our pancreas cease to produce insulin, which is a hormone that helps to transfer sugar from your bloodstream into the cells of the entire body, or, and that occurs mostly to old and obese people, if your pancreas simply cannot, cannot keep up with hormone production. If that occurs, the sugar stacks up in your blood, and trust me, you don't want it happening to you in the long run, as you most likely die in about 5 to 10 years. But why does it happen in the first place? Does the organ simply seize up and says, I can't do this anymore? Well, yes and no, depending on the type of diabetes you get. Let's begin with the second type, as it is much easier to explain. As I mentioned earlier, in this type, your pancreas simply cannot cope with a growing demand of insulin that everybody requires. This touches mostly old and obese people and can be simply controlled with a good amount of diet and physical training. So, nothing of a huge interest here. But type 1, yes, this is where the fun begins. Imagine that you are a healthy, strong, happy teenager with no history of medical problems whatsoever. Then, out of nowhere, you start to drink about 8 liters of water on a daily basis, have to go to the toilet four times during the night, and generally feel tired no matter how long you rest. That's exactly what happened to me about three years ago. I can still remember what a shock it was for me when the doctor informed me that for the rest of my life I have to inject insulin and check my sugar level, which are both painful, almost six times a day. But what happened in the first place that I ended up with damaged pancreas? Well, it turns out that my own autoimmune system, which was supposed to protect me, by the way, constantly kept destroying my insulin-producing cells. That's the main reason why people develop type 1 diabetes. As a result of infection or whatever, your white blood cells simply turn against you and start to kill and destroy your insulin-producing regions. And nobody to this day still fully knows why. After two weeks, I finally put myself together and started to learn about my disability. And soon after, a realization came to me that, God damn it, I am a lucky man. You see, when the same fate happened to a person that was born almost 100 years ago, they would be dead in just five years. Until 1922, there was no insulin ready to give to the patient, and diabetes diagnosis was basically a death sentence. Only after this year, a Canadian doctor had an idea to take out the rabbit's pancreas and use it to produce insulin. And even though it sounds pretty hilarious, that actually worked, and millions of, millions of lives were saved from certain death. In the beginning, injecting insulin was extremely painful, as sick had to use huge needles, just like that, which after the, which after the usage left huge ones, and which left, left huge ones. Also, the insulin itself, as it came from animals, wasn't completely pure, and therefore caused huge discomfort or sometimes even suffering when given to the patient. Only later, with technological progress and a huge market full of opportunities, did the patient's comfort begin to rise. In the 1980s, the first home glucose monitoring device was, was introduced. It was called the glucometer, and it finally allowed uh, the sick to control the disease with relative ease. You simply had to prick yourself with a needle and suck the spilled blood for a special strip into the glucometer, which after two to three minutes gave back the results. The glucometers are still, to this day, the basis of glucose monitoring and are used widely in hospitals, clinics, etc. You may sometimes see people in public wearing white round sensors and wonder what are those mysterious things attached to their bodies. Well, let me briefly explain. Those are Libra sensors introduced in 2016. When they first came to the market, it was a revolution you no longer had to prick yourself with a needle six times a day and then check your sugar level. You simply took your phone, put it to your sensor, and you had the result, thanks to the NFC technology. Nowadays, almost every diabetic wants to have one of those, and I personally have one myself. 
But what about those long glass needles? Do we still use them? Fortunately, not. Companies began to use plastic, and today we use those. I assume that people from the back rows can't even see it. And that is fine, because those finally allowed for precise and not so painful doses of insulin. Also, the special pens were introduced, which allowed the sick to dose the insulin with relative ease and precise, very precise. Even further, the digital, the, the digital revolution allowed for the, for the creation of so-called pumps, which are small computers attached to our body through a special puncture. And therefore, we no longer have to inject the insulin ourselves. We can just simply type in the amount, and boom, it's ready. So, with monitoring and injection made easy, what is left to improve? That's the question I asked myself about one year ago. And then, an idea pops into my mind. What if I were to create an algorithm which would allow, which would allow me not to pay attention to my disease anymore? Well, I began my research and it turns out that this idea was something a uh, closed loop and has been in the minds of researchers for quite some time. But it wasn't created yet. Why? After going through the documentation of people that tried to achieve this Mikarol's device, I realized that they, that they had most likely given up due to too many variables and different characteristics of every human body, such as the fact that every sick person takes a slightly different amount of insulin for different amounts of it consumed. Another major problem was the delay between eating, glucose level rising, and readout of the information by a sensor. Also, because normally, when you are type 1 diabetic, you have to inject insulin before the meal. And as the hormone takes time to, takes time to work. You, also, you decide how much insulin is to be administered to you on the basis of, a, of a special carbohydrate and protein fat exchanges that your food contains. So, isn't it possible to create a so-called closed loop? Well, we will see. But I began, my, but, but, but I began uh, thinking how to tackle those problems. Firstly, I came up with an idea for the first problem of this delay between absorption and administration of the hormone. My idea was instead that instead of using one puncture, we use more punctures simply, and therefore the total amount of insulin will be divided at the time needed for the absorption of the hormone would be much, much less. So, with the first problem solved, now it's time to handle the second, harder one. How my algorithm is supposed to calculate how much insulin is supposed to, it is supposed to give it to me? Well, it has to be something that both exchanges, protein, fat, and carbohydrate had in common. Logically, the only obvious answer here is that they both raise glucose level. I coded it so when the sensor noticed a sharp rise in sugar level, for example, from 120 to 160, they would pass this information immediately to the computer, which would calculate the, the, the total amount of insulin that is, that is to be administered to my body. As I mentioned earlier, every characteristic, every, every human body is different, and therefore I had to spend almost six months writing down my every result of every sugar uh, measurement and every injection, and therefore after the equation was formed. I recently began testing, and it seems that it's working. Well, that is, of course, not counting to time that almost killed me, but, you know, nothing happens without difficulties. My next step is to create a fully operational closed prototype, fully operational prototype, made from garage-made pump and also an Arduino microcomputer. You see, when I was first informed with my, with, with my diagnosis, it was a catastrophe. But now I realize that this obstacle that life has thrown at me was actually an inspiration. An inspiration to become better self, because I have to strictly watch out for the sugar level. And also created this opportunity for me to develop a fully operational closed loop, which, well, which may one day revolutionize how we see people with diabetes. Thank you very much.